Have you given any thought to contributing to The Melt? It's easy to do. Just click the Patreon link in the episode notes, and for as little as $3 a month, you can get access to bonus episodes, early access to regular episodes, and you can also participate in monthly Zoom meetups. It helps to keep the magic happening here at The Melt. So I encourage you to karmically entangle yourself with The Melt today by subscribing monthly for less than the price of a container of goatee wax, or a prosthetic pinky, or a half stick of DMT butter, or an inflatable casket or the shrunken head of an Atlantean supermodel, or a woolly mammoth smirkin, or a crystalline replica of Baba Yaga's hut, or a capsule of Sasquatch dander. This is Hunter Muse. And this is Chris Snipes. And you are listening to The Melt. Today's guests are Tommy John, whom we've had on The Melt before, and Dr. Cassie Huckabee, who is a naturopathic physician, and so much more. Both of these practitioners work towards helping others heal themselves, transforming the usual passivity of Western medicine into something that is alive, fluid, and interactive. Hunter and I really resonate with what they're doing and thought that it would be fun to have them on the show together. I start off the conversation by asking Cassie what the process was for her to become the sort of healer that she has transformed into. Yes, um, we'll give you the very abbreviated version. So I initially valued a completely different system, a completely different school of thought, and um, was all the way in in that world until it couldn't help me. And so then I had to find a better way, and the better way led me to natural medicine and then ultimately back to the self um, and complete self-reliance. And that has shaped my medicine and informs everything that I do outside of um, really what it is to be a human and less of what medicine is, what doctors do. Um, But I work underneath (laughs) the umbrella of medicine and um, work with people to bring them back to themselves and help them realize that they are walking doctors, medicine, um, biochemical factories, um, and the most powerful thing on the planet. So took a long road to get here, but um, ultimately brought it all back to myself. Fabulous. And you were actually vaccine injured too, right? That's correct. Well, yes, it was a piece of the whole puzzle. Um, I was just not a healthy human being. And it was kind of the last little input that pushed everything over to where I expressed symptoms in such a way that they could no longer be ignored. Um, But I would say that the dysfunction started a lot earlier. So I will never give all of my power over to any individual input, especially if it's made by man. So I, I no longer, you know, put myself in that category of that. I don't own the diagnosis. I don't own, you know, that that input had some power over me, but it was a huge piece to what brought me to my knees to realize that I needed to change things up, look in a different direction, um, and then realize something greater for sure. So how did you do it? How did you cure yourself? Yeah, (laughs) so powerful. Um, 
I took the long way. I initially went into the doing of stuff. I went into um, natural medicine, lifestyle, supplements, herbal medicine, um, homeopathy, sunlight. I went to all of the doing of the stuff. Um, and then I got to a point where there was enough physiological change within my body that I improved and could technically um, not be diagnosed according to allopathic standards with those words that I was given through a lot of work through two years of just pure grit um, and not seeing much changes. And then through getting that breakthrough after that two year window of like, oh my gosh, <laughs> all of this crazy stuff actually does work and it's massively important. Um, and then came to another level, I would say in the healing process, um, which is just the realization that I then became imprisoned by those things that I was doing. Um, and so then that leveled me up another degree to say, there's more here than needing a supplement. There's more here than needing a diet. There's more here than even needing, you know, the lifestyle and all of these things that have value. Um, and so I, I would say that the cure was more of a mindset. The cure was more in my being and such a foundational change to where I changed so much that my values were different, that the things that I was doing, the the how and the why became more important than the what. Um, and so that I think it was less of something that I put into my body that elicited a change or a cure. It was more I changed to such a degree that it shifted the whole matrix of who I was, how I saw the world, how I interacted with the world, um, and therefore how the world was able to engage and interact with me. Cool. And well, I, I think the one thing that you both have uh, similar going on as far as your methods of, of helping people to heal themselves is something that's kind of like a radical presence, right? Like it starts in the moment. It starts where you're at, at this particular point in time. And every person is sort of their own uh, ecosystem in a sense. Like I've heard you say, Cassie, that, you know, one herb will work wonders for one person and one, it might have a detrimental effect on somebody else. How, how maybe talk a mm -hmm. little bit about how you both navigate uh, that sort of territory. Go ahead, Cass. All right. Um, so I, it's so important to look at the individual. That's why I think both of us kind of have a distaste, not kind of, <laughs> definitely have a distaste for um, any type of protocol, any type of blueprint of follow this and you're going to get here um, because there's so much that comes into being a human being. There are so many parts to being a, an individual and to think that you can take any of those factors away um, is completely ridiculous. And so it, it's not just, you know, follow the path, put all of these ingredients and you've got a cake. Humans are so much more dynamic than that and so much more complex and so much more mysterious and beautiful in, in such a powerful way. And so just like when you put something that's a conscious compound, like an herb into a body, um, it has a response within the physiology. There's some component of that, that is a one-to-one -one, and there's this other world when you deal with natural substances that make scientists just like go crazy because they cannot be, they're not predictable. They don't behave in a standard way. It's not a one-to-one. -one. Um, and so this is even more complex when you look at an individual as a whole. So um, there's no two people that even see the same color the same. So if we're going to go and treat them the same way because they have a fictitious name that matches. So we take a diagnosis and say, all people that are, t you know, diagnosed with MS, we're going to treat them all the same way. And like, here's the blueprint, here's the protocol, you do all these steps, at the end of this, you will be healed. And unfortunately, if that were true, we would see a lot of, I mean, a lot of healed people, a lot of success stories. And unfortunately, that's not what we're getting because there's so much more to being a human, the mindset, um, how we interpret everything that we do, the meaning that we get from it, um, our values, our experience of it. And so um, I know this is a huge piece on my side and probably I'll let TJ take over his part as well. Well, yeah, that's the thing I, I say always as a joke, but not really. <clears throat> I take notes on the first day and then I'm done. Like I, I really wouldn't take <laughs> notes of somebody because why would I care who they were on a Monday, June 18th, when I'm when they're even seconds later past that point, they're a completely different person. And I have to come up with an idea and a plan 
based on that person changing all the time and being a completely different remodeled person, then and they're always asking, do you do follow ups? Are we going to reevaluate every single day of every single month of every single year? You're constantly reevaluating yourself. So, yeah, we're doing it, but you're doing it. And I always tell them I'm following the breadcrumbs that you leave behind. I don't have any idea. Just like Cassie said, I had a young lady in this morning, um, the surgeon. It was her fifth surgery on her knee. Wow. And the surgeon went to my Instagram when she said who, who she was going to be rehabbing with. And he was like, are you sure? <laughs> and she, he had a big problem with me because I didn't, I didn't fit, you know, the, the idea of what rehab or performance should be. Sure. And I said, you know what? You're doing so well um, to, this, to this girl. I said, you're doing so well. It'll never hit home in their world because he's going to want, like Cassie said, a protocol for knees. And it's an experimental cartilage replacement that he did. She's doing so well that they're going to want to package that protocol for that kneecap. But they, it's a, it's a, I'm going to use her, not her name, but it's a, it's a Sarah protocol, not a knee replacement mm -hmm. pro. And, and you got to take in that she has room to work with who she is with every given moment of every given day. And I can rest at night knowing that I gave her something that will allow her to push herself to the brink of absolute neurological, emotional, intellectual, spiritual, physical change. She can do it safely on her own. She can do it anywhere. She needs nothing. It's the worst business plan, by the way, <laughs> because she doesn't have to come back technically, but, but they love the honesty and the truth. And that, that allows for the ever, I literally got into tears this morning, walking on a walk and Cassie, I know you can, I, I was, I was walking on a walk and I'm literally like, we're designed in such a way that the challenge changes us. Like the mm -hmm. challenge, we keep trying to find the easiest road to everything. But I'm like, our design is so we can be challenged. Holy shit. Like, what, what do we have in store because of the challenge? Like, that's the design that we're here. So what is coming? Like, when we are challenged or we do receive this, what is here? Because that's how we're created so that we don't change unless stimulated greater than something previous. Otherwise, we start declining to just survive. And I'm like, the design is made to just withstand Cassie's two years. I guarantee you she wouldn't want to go through those. But she saw many bottoms to many <laughs> different things. She, she experienced a lot. We all have those moments that we would equate to our being our lowest. But that is when I think it's our greatest because the healing response is always greater than that. So I just like trying to allow the person to discover that. And Cassie can tell you when they do, don't you mm -hmm. like just want to cry? Like, isn't yeah. it just- Oh, I, I do <laughs> cry. <laughs> we literally cry in visits every day. Yeah. And, yeah. And it doesn't matter like what she's dealing with the labels that they've been giving with her in soft tissue injury world or the yeah. performance world. It, the, it doesn't, even, this is just our two little worlds. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like when I yeah go ahead. Well, and I think what this does too is the way that we go about it. Like they, we don't go and fix the symptom because um, I think from both of our perspectives, we see how that does a disservice to the people. Mm -hmm. um, and so instead, like in my world, I want them to understand what the body is saying and why it's saying it like they do. Because in the other world, um, you know, I always like try to get a blank slate, and I think. Um, TJ and I are on the same premise, right? Where you start matters with regards to where you go and how you ask questions and why you ask questions. So the simplest way I like to present it to people, which is exactly how he does his world too, is we start from the premise that the body is right. Mm -hmm. And so there's a massive difference when you start from there versus when you start from the other angle that your body is wrong. Let's find what's wrong about it and let's fix it. Whereas he and I are on this other side saying your body is right. <laughs> Why would it be doing what it's doing? And so then when you look at this, the easiest way, because like people will come and be like, what about functional medicine? What about this? What about this diet? What about this diet? It's true. I mean, it's good. It's right. It's this. And so my, I just always want to simplify like, okay, but if you're starting from the wrong, a flawed premise, even if your answer is right, it's not true. And so where he and I are starting is from the same spot of the body is right. <laughs> 
Why is it doing what it's doing? How do we know that the body's right? Because you're alive. Mm -hmm. And then when we ask questions, they're true, right? Instead of going into this right, wrong, good, bad, it, that's absolutely pointless if you're starting from the flawed premise because your questions will be different. Your investigation will be different. Your approach, your therapy will be different, right? And so that's one thing that going, starting from this true premise has an impact on the human because they should leave. We have a higher expectation with regards to our mechanics than our health practitioners. We expect to go to a health, to a mechanic and they help us understand what was going on in the car, fix it however they need to fix it. And we drive off not needing the mechanic in our passenger seat. And so that's kind of like, I feel like what he and I do are like, we want you out there driving the car. Mm -hmm. And trusting that your car can leave the lot and work perfectly fine. You can go zero to 90 whenever you want. You can turn on a dime and there's no like, oh my gosh, this thing might break down. I need a mechanic beside me at all times. And so this is like starting from a different premise. That's why it's really got to step outside that whole model, that whole way of thinking. Because if you get into right or wrong, you'll make yourself dizzy. Mm -hmm. It's where you start. And he and I are starting in the same spot and that's why we speak the same language on so many levels of like, we never look at the body and be like, oh gosh, I am so sorry. Right. You are so screwed up. <laughs> let's, let's try to cover that up, cut it out, suppress it, make you more comfortable in the life that's causing the pathology. We go and say, hey, we're going to really make you massively uncomfortable right now. You're not going to like how it feels to be on the other side of this conversation with me. I'm going to disrupt a lot of things and make it really like, you know, Honesty doesn't feel good, sure. but the truth of it is going to create such massive change in you that you change again, fundamentally not change what you're tinkering with you change. And when you change, this is when you don't need me. You don't need him. You understand this thing that you're in. You have such a respect for it. And that massively changes the outcomes. That's why like, it's not like he and I are going to the latest, greatest conferences. No. We're just like, <laughs> like absolutely not. That's where we met, right? Yeah, just, right. Um, but it, you were crashing it together, <laughs> right? Exactly. But like, we're with the we're with humans. We're studying ourselves. We're like challenging ourselves, trying to understand why we do things the way we do. Trying to understand what is my body actually saying. Like, right. I know I can speak for myself here, but there's always an opportunity to learn mm -hmm. in my own body. Like, what are you saying? Exactly. <laughs> Why are you mm -hmm. saying this? And you never stop learning. And so I feel like I see this in him and how he talks about what he does. And I'll let you take over. Cause I feel like you probably have some to put in here too. I well, just, I, I want to say like one, I just want to say Go one ahead. thing very quickly. Of course. Immediately. As soon as you both got online and you started speaking, I felt the frequency um, elevate the energy <laughs> in the room shifted and we are half mm -hmm. a country away from the both of you and it's amazing yeah. to see how two people who resonate at a higher level can actually influence people it, it's giving me chills it's just mm -hmm. incredible to see how you can see someone who's who's vibrating at a low frequency and trying mm -hmm. to get some type of healing from someone vibrating at a low frequency is never going to work. Okay. So yeah. being able to align yourself with people who are not only uh, prescribing healing, but doing their own work on themselves on a daily basis, mm -hmm. really embodying that is the thing that I, I mm -hmm. feel like really sets the both of you apart. And that's what's so exciting, mm -hmm. because I feel better already just even listening to the two of you talk. It's, a, it's just riveting. I love that. Well, absolutely. Um, and on that note, I speak very, there's not many there's not many names I recommend in many fields mm -hmm. um, just because I've seen where, where they're coming from and I've seen what a lot of people stand for and I just wouldn't refer to anybody. And so when I say her name um, to patients or when I say her name on a post, like that's a big deal for me to support a name sure. and, a, and a person. And, and, it, and it is. It's a person. It's not a system. It's not her, uh, you know, grouping or whatever. It's, it's Cassie. That, that's who I'm respecting and referring out. And part of it, she's mentioned it, when she says the word truth, true, it's capital T. 
Sure. Like it's a, it's a <laughs> capital. Do you know what I mean? And the only, there's two practitioners. Another gentleman uh, is one of my good friends. Um, he's in Northern Chicago, uh, Northern Illinois, Vladimir Chagus. And I think something that the two of them, like I, I just trying to pull back and discover what her practice was for me selfishly. It was like, yeah, I want to refer people to you, but I kind of want to like go and level up and fly and do some really cool shit, you know? So I'd like you to look under my hood and like, let's get real here. Sure. And the thing with him, he's one of the only people I trust from a training world, performance world. She is the only person I trust in medicine. You need to understand where I'm coming from, but where, what commonalities and what you said, the two of them, her specifically, are constantly, constantly, constantly challenging the system, experimenting on self, reading the book called Personal Experimentation, <laughs> just over and over and over to see the nth degree of her medicine or what she's going to share. Me, personally, I cannot give somebody something that I don't know what's going to happen right. to them. Everything I'm giving to somebody, I've pushed myself to the limit to where I'm electrocuting bathtubs and laying <laughs> in them to my friggin' neck in a full electrically charged bathtub. Wow. Because I was presented with this tool and I wanted to check to see we're going through stuff now. I'm constantly doing it in the office. I know she's got a couple experiments going on in her. She might have something going on right now out of camera. But the, thing, <laughs> the, the thing of it is like my buddy Vladimir as well. Like what's your, I just talked to him the other day. What's your experiment you're doing? He's got some things he's doing and he's been doing for the last six months mm -hmm. and he will be doing for the next year. And that's another thing. Six months to a year to observe yeah. changes. Right. That's pretty fair. Mm -hmm. Like that's not. Mm -hmm. So when we live like every inch of our lives is this. She said your life is your medicine. Like every flipping inch of everything mm -hmm. I'm doing, she's doing any like it is all tied back to how what is this whole ride? What right. is this thing I'm in right now? And what like degree could I discover that one propels us and holds us here so we're just flying all over the place and then two so we know how to bring it to a level that maybe somebody else could benefit from it yeah uh, well and i will say if i can just because you brought it up so you brought up the topic um <laughs> so one thing too that i think is massively powerful is the action um and that's one thing that i think that he's the epitome of because when i was working with him i'm used to people ready to take action, but not quite to the degree <laughs> that like I experienced with him because then it was like, no, this needs to change. This needs to change. And we need to do this. And he's like, done. All right, I'm starting. And I'm like, you didn't want to like give it like a three day window. Cause usually, and it's like, there's these components to this too, that if you can do this and you can realize the power of it. And when you value it and you put all of yourself in, that's when you get the results because then some people will come because they've heard him talk about coming. Like, I want you to give me whatever you give him. And I'm like, I, you, you can't take it. You wouldn't be able to handle it. Not because you're less of a human, but because of what it takes, like the foundation that it takes to have that capacity to then take an input to that degree. And so there's such a beautiful um, piece to this too because – Everything that we recommend, everything that I recommend, I've done it. Mm -hmm. I've tasted it. I've felt what it feels like to bottom out right. detoxing. I've felt what it felt like to you know lose vision and to have to rebuild muscles and to have – I know what it feels like. That's why we, I can walk mm -hmm. you through it. And so that's one thing that's so massively powerful for me is I, I want – I think it's – if we're going to look to people, we need to look to people that are doing, not just the people yeah. that can talk it. Mm -hmm. And you can tell when somebody, you can't hide this exactly. truth, like these big truths. You That's can't true. hide it, right? It's going to sneak out and seep out and you can like control as best you can, but the truth will speak for itself. And it's the doing that we need now more than ever, not just sitting down and being like, this is so fun. So even if you're listening to this day, like this makes me feel good. Like, what do I do with exactly. this? Like, how do I incorporate something that we talk about during this time so that I'm a different human being because I had this input and now I'm going to yeah. take an action with it? Um, because this is that one-to-one, -one, like, like we have a tendency to want to sit and like marinate in mm -hmm. the concepts. And now what we need more than ever is to take action, to experience it for ourselves and to be like, oh my gosh, yes. like 
then when you go through everything, you go work with him, you come work with me. And I've had patients all the time, and I'm sure he gets the same, like, they come work with us. And then they're like, they go back and look at our videos, our Instagram, they're like, Oh, my yeah. gosh. And I'm like, <laughs> right, I know. Yeah. <laughs> but it changes when you live it, it changes when you breathe it, it changes when you speak it, feel it, know it to your core, when it's circulating within your vasculature, it changes everything. And so this is another thing that I think we embody. And that's why you have that feeling that you said that you had, which I think is such a beautiful thing, because what that is, is that is a truth in you resonating with the truth in us. And when we have that level of resonance, right, because it is true, that's when we're touching those capital T truths. It's not something that we have to sit here and try to like control right. you, wow you, force you, coerce you into hoping that you believe the way that we believe so that we're right. It's saying, we don't care if you think that we're right. Listen with a wide open mind. See what's true for you. And then if that hits something that we're like, hey, we've lived this. We're bringing you what's true for us. Then we're like, hey, that's cool. And that's why even like he and I resonated. We came from completely different backgrounds, completely different worlds. But we lived our life. We lived our worlds. We lived our medicine. And then when we brought what we're bringing to people is like, hey, I did it the hard way. Right. It was freaking gnarly and took a long time. I'm trying to bring you my truths, right? If somebody could have grabbed my face and said, hey, <laughs> this will make it easier. Focus right. here. Don't focus on this. And so this is even like the, the beauty of us all being in this moment together is because of that lived experience, those truths that have even brought us here saying, hey, exactly. we're all in this together. There's no hierarchy to this. And we're all a bunch of humans, like even him getting rid of his title, which I'm close <laughs> to doing, um, is us saying like, Strip it all away. Yeah. Like we're bringing our life. We're bringing what we live. We're bringing those tears, the happiness, you know, the bumps, the bruises. And we're saying, hey, this is how I did it. And this is why I know that it's true for me. Why don't you experience it and see how that feels for you? Um, and even me personally, I'll release this getting to experience his work. It's massively different when you experience it. Then you interpret his words right. completely differently than if you're just outside being like, that would be really cool to do that to try that or like to even experience anything that he's talking about um so i think it's a massive piece to this and just coming back to that yeah. human we're all humans just doing the best we can well i'm in the process i i need some massive healing myself right now i i've been through some trauma in the past 53 years of being on this planet and i think that all of the stars have kind of aligned to this moment and that's why I got the chills because I'm at this place where I'm I need to say what is my first step what do I do if I don't have any money I'm in the middle of the country I can't fly to see either one of you how do I heal myself speaking for myself and also for people maybe in our audience who are in the same exact position that I'm in what do you do? What's step one that I need to take? Go ahead, Cass. I'll let you start on this Teach. one. No, you take this <laughs> one. You start. <laughs> you start and then I'll follow. Well, so I think the biggest thing is whatever has you feeling you need to heal, the healing's already happening. So so it's it's already going on. Like like even if it's out of my wheelhouse and Cassie can go deeper, but it's already happening. It's automatic. It's how we're designed. Like it's happening. So I need to start healing. So we need to change that wording. Just I, I need to heal more or I want to know how I can right. remove things so that I can let this light go through at light speed because it, it as damage changes like a tissue is damaged right now. I'm standing up tissues damaged all over my body. Healing's already happening. I'm just standing here like it's going to continue to happen. So now, body's done its best with the 15 senses we had or however many they limited us down to, to let us know <laughs> that there's some responses and there's some like amazing things going on. Great. So that's number one is like looking at that. One, we're healing. Two, these are the conversations that the body is trying to have. If just staying with mine, like... Uh, so I'm soft tissue injuries. I'm tissue damage. I'm joint damage. I'm 
Also coming back into physical competency, though, because again, last time we laughed, got happy, made love, or we got sad, angry, or frustrated, they were physical responses. And if the physical body can't express those emotions, which are all healthy, like all of those are healthy, and we can't express them to the fullest, because the body's like, I was going to let you cry your brains out, but you didn't have the musculature to do that because you would have ripped yourself apart. So I downplayed it. I shifted things elsewhere. We're going to hold that back until you get to the physical comments. Then we're going to let it all out. Could be 11 years. I don't know. And so from a standpoint of just healing body wide, like emotionally, intellectually, spirit, like all that stuff. Okay. Physical competency. What was our greatest results ever? from a physicality standpoint, training or rehab, whatever you want to limit me to saying that I do. It was when we were <laughs> came out of mom and went to standing and walking in a year, like at least a year, self-taught. Okay, so since I don't know anything, <laughs> and I'm really upfront that I don't know anything, <laughs> I do know I used to be a friggin' baby, and I do know I can observe a baby, and I do know that we went through some really radical shit then. And so if I looked at like our worst level, our gr like our lowest, what's coined our worst, but is really our greatest healing time, what did we all look like? I'll say it was the day my brother died. When my brother died, mm. I hit the floor and I looked like this. I was fetal and I was crying my eyes out fetal. Okay, so there's clues in our development to our adult people now our body resorts to our beginning and stages of our beginning. So what was important then when I was crying my eyes out and I just thought the world and I was going to die, I wanted to kill myself, my brother, I want to kill a psychiatrist, like I was done. I'm crying and I'm fetal, okay? What, is a, what does an infant do? <laughs> they breathe, eat, sleep, defecate. Looks like I need to be doing that, meaning simplify right and so if i can simplify and okay what do you simplify nourishment like uh, what what diet okay what did the infant eat we all ate the same shit the first like four years of life or we hope we did it all came from mom well we're not going to go non on breast right now but like literally where is it coming from from source so whatever that means maybe it's fruits maybe it's just spring water maybe it's just sunshine and air I don't know what it is, but all I'm saying is when things just feel like they're spiraling out, simplify to the absolute max you can possibly do. And if we do this, I can't tell you how, how complex this is. Fasting and breath. <laughs> oh my God. Like this is such mm -hmm. a time to simplify because the body just craves simple in those moments when we feel and I know we're drunk on information we're drunk on specialists we're drunk on compartmentalizing everything we're drunk on who we go to we're drunk on who's saying the right things we already have the right things we've already been through the right things it's all coded inside of us we already know this and so I'm just like when even with me when I get really messed up Okay, wait, wait. What, what is, what's the most basic form of, and I go back to literally the stages that we went through development that got me to this point here, and I'm pretty kind of pumped that I got to this far, but the foundation of it was laid out, and I've found that a lot of the times people will find what they're looking for in those simple moments, and then we'll give them a breath of a victory, a, a celebration of, oh, shit, I can get out of bed. Or, oh my God, I can tell that person to stop calling me. Or I can, you know, take a shower without crying. Or I can go to sleep 10 minutes earlier. I can, you know, some of those things. And then those little victories compound and compound into this beautiful compounding interest account. And so for my world, that's what I would say. Um, but Cassie's going to knock this one out of the park. I'm going <laughs> I'm gonna pick you back. No, I, this is a beautiful thing about truth. Like, Truth is the thread that's going to be the words that he says. They're going to match the words I say, but it's going to be said in a different way. The truth that you're going to feel is that golden thread that's saying yes, <laughs> right? And the truth here is basics, right? So there's a couple of things that I would go into. So say you have no access um, to anything and you are needing to heal. So I would say the ultimate is you've got to, again, what we've already talked about, start from the premise, 
Because in the past, when you feel these things in your body, all of your psychology, all of your physiology supports something is wrong with me, find it, fix it. And if you're starting there, you will never, ever, 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 ever improve. Why? Because no matter what step you take, it's not true. And so now make it so, so simple. So simple. Notice that word. So simple. Starting from what I know to be true. Is it true that my body can't be trusted, doesn't know how to heal? If this were true, I couldn't heal a cut. So is that true? Probably not. So maybe I divorce that whole model and try on something new that might feel a little bit different, have a different outcome. So since I've tried all of that, I'm going to try this because that's just logical thinking. We're just going to do a little experiment. So now I'm going to operate from the premise that my body is right. And now when it presents with something, then I have completely different questions for it. Why? Right? And so then when you're dealing um, with healing, there's always, you have to flip it around. So starting from the premise is essential. And then the second thing I would say, because we are humans and we are the most powerful thing on the planet is you have to know that that has to be pulsating through you. That can't be an affirmation. That can't be something cute. It has to be something lived. And so that's not to say that you're going to wake up every single day, even like with my own experience, you don't wake up every single day being like, yeah, I'm a badass quantum machine. Now, sometimes you wake up and you're broke out, you're sad, you're overwhelmed, you're confused, you're nauseous, you're tired. And you're just like, what the hell? Like how I'm a blob. Like I don't, but you still have to have something pulsing in you saying, no, I'm the most powerful thing on the planet. And everything about me is perfectly right. How do I know? Cause I'm here. And then when you start from there, then your actions after that, you can stumble to them, but they're going to be true. You can sprint to them. They will still be true. So then it doesn't matter the pace, the accuracy, the precision. You're true. So you're going to go towards what is true, which means results. Okay. So always starting there is going to make it so, so, so simple. Right. And then you get back to those basics because then what I would ask you is, you know, it's no, it's not that you lack information guaranteed. It's not that you lack intellectual accumulation to point you in a direction of what it is to be well as a human being. So where do we have to look now? Again, looking at you being like, she's the most powerful thing on the planet. She has everything that she needs. She's a quantum machine more advanced than any technology on the planet. So then our other questions are, if she is that, then why is she not experiencing what her body is doing naturally? Well, because you're the most powerful thing on the planet, where are you resisting the healing that you're desiring? And so then what that does is it puts you in the mirror, (laughs) you in front of you. (laughs) And that's where the deepest healing ever is always going to be. And then it's going to be, what, what do you not want to do? Why do you not want to give up those foods? That You know these are healthy foods. Why do you not want to give them up? Why is it so hard for you? Those are the better questions. Not, does she know that fruits and vegetables and sunlight and, and hydration and movement are good for her? I guarantee everybody does, right? Basics, 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 basics. But what are you doing? Which ones of those are you doing? Because you come and study my life. You come and study his life right? You come watch us in every single second, even our Mm -hmm. worst days. You go look at what we're doing and it's like, okay, she is a blob of a sad little human being right now, but she's hydrating with like the best thing she could hydrate with. She's consuming these high frequency, high vibrational foods. She's doing these things. She's looking in the mirror and trying to be like, what, what's wrong? Like what, what's hurting in you? What are you needing in this moment? Does it look all pretty and perfect on the outside? No. But like what we're doing is what we're speaking. It's pulsating through us. You will not catch us even on the worst day. Our life is our medicine. And we take massive ownership of that. Therefore, everything that I do, the time's going to pass either way. And so you have full control. And so for you to ever outsource any of your power is never going to get you the results that you want. So then the other thing too, going back to the basics of basics, because you did bring up trauma. So I want to acknowledge that too. You got to get simple with that because the trauma already happened. It's not here. Okay. But we're human beings. And so we have to get to the basics of why that actually is still impacting you. That's a better question, right? So ask better questions from the standpoint of you're the most powerful thing on the planet. There's no flaw in you and you're always healing. So then we got to ask the better questions of what's getting in the way, right? And that's where you look at this stuff. And then you've got to just be really simple with, it's not, did the trauma happen? That's all of the science and medicine. It's not even medicine. 
it, it's whatever that is to talk about what happened over and over and over and over and over. It already happened. It is not going to benefit you by pulling it into today. It is not here. And all of your power, all of your healing is available right here, right now. Okay. And so what you have to do is you've got to go back and look at the little girl that experienced it, the young woman that experienced it, the adult that experienced it. And instead of looking at the what, you have to go and understand how did I experience that? What program did I write into my world based off of that input? So the best example is like, say, um, we'll say for trauma example, we'll say just like getting bitten by a dog. Okay. So you can't go and tell a little girl that had never seen a dog before a little puppy comes up and she gets bitten and has this wound. And she's like, what the hell is that thing? It looked cute. That is not cute. This is not okay. So what a program is, is you go and you write a program that says dogs are dangerous. Puppies yeah. are vicious dinosaurs. Right. Stay away from puppies. Okay. And so then the world that we live in, the medical model that we live in says, medicate her around puppies. Go and try to talk out why puppies are bad. Remind her how bad puppies are. When we just need to go and be like, oh my gosh, like, if we could go back in time and have like maybe a parent come in and hold that little girl and be like, Oh my gosh, sweetheart, all puppies are not like this. So don't write onto the world, your perception that all puppies are bad and that it's not safe to be around puppies. Why? Cause puppies can be very medicinal. They're cute. They have puppy breath. They're adorable. Your experience doesn't reflect right. the truth of the world. And that's what you've got to do with these traumas. You've got to go and hold the little girl that experienced them instead of saying, Puppies aren't bad. I don't give a shit what you say about puppies. My experience with puppies are they are freaking terrible. They're basically a velociraptor. I'm not interested right. in your stories, right? And so it's this that you have to go and meet on the level of that. And actually, if you're seeking out a therapy, a medicine that doesn't put you in the driver's seat, that gives you like just tries to put a bandaid on the wound that tries to like use affirmations to no, you've got to go right to the source always. And you've got to be the one again, being like, Oh God, <laughs> I see why I would have written that onto the world. I see how that makes sense for me to say all puppies in the grand scheme of life are bad. It's not true. And so then what do you have to go confront? You go confront you. And then what do you do? You go start petting some puppies and you change your experience of that thing and you're going to have, you know, put that on a million different versions with regards to traumas because we can no longer um, be captive by those experiences. They're in the past. What you've got is here, every single second here. And so to pull it in is just contaminating the purity of who you are right now. And so sometimes it's the not pulling it in could be a proper, you know, method or understanding it. Because there's value to why you did what you did, why you responded, how you responded. So again, it's still you with you, not needing another book, not needing another guru, a practitioner, another expert, another supplement, another, like if you, in those instances where you catch yourself doing that, exactly what he said earlier, that's in this, I need it. That's not true. Like in we, when we talk about the body, it's true. <laughs> it, it like it's so beautifully true. That's why we do lie detector tests, uh, muscle testing. Like we're like, oh yeah, the body will not lie with regards to these things. But with you trusting yourself, just in general life, fuck right. that. That's not safe. <laughs> and we can't do that. That it makes no sense at all. So then you have to get back to the truth of the truth. If you're going to start from a flawed premise with your body, I need this thing. What do you think it's going to do? Go weak. That's not true. So you're starting off on a flawed premise just with that. And no matter what you choose, no matter who you thought you needed, it's going to be a no. And so that's exactly what he was speaking about is like, you cannot, like, if you want to work with me, badass. If you want to work with him, because you want somebody to challenge you, push you to your limits, right. choose it, right? That's that choice. That's that power of the choice. But don't go into it like, I need, because... That's the same thing with me. If anybody comes and says that they need me, I'm like, we got to work on this before yeah. we can go anywhere. You can't need me. I, we can't just put doctors in the place of the parents that we didn't have. We can't put practitioners in the, you have to finally get on, you know, stand on your own two feet and be like, gosh, it's scary here sometimes. It's unpredictable, challenging. <laughs> I get overwhelmed. I'm basically a kid that has 
accumulated more chronological time and I don't know what the hell is going on. And then just start being brutally honest with yourself. And there's so much healing just within the basics, simple and um, complete, complete massive transparency and honesty. And then looking at yourself in the mirror, like, I don't want any outs. I want to come face to face with my shit. Right. Um, I'll, I had a dream one time in med school that this uh, tiger was just chasing me and chasing me and chasing me and chasing me. And it was this nightmare. And I kept like waking up and like panicking. And then finally I was so tired of like the few hours I was getting to sleep, having to have this nightmare. And so it was like, I became conscious in my dream and I was like, I am done running from this thing. And I just like stared at it. Like, let's do that. Like get gory, whatever the heck is about to happen. And in the dream, it just came and it walked and stood beside me. And so instead of running from all of this stuff that we're running from, because we don't think we're strong enough to confront it, sometimes you just have to have just enough courage to stare at it in the eyes and be like, do mm-hmm. your worst. Let's worst case scenario. And oftentimes, almost every time it comes and it comes and stands beside you and says, guess what? <laughs> that's all you had to do. Right. And so that's what I would say to you. You don't need a practitioner for it. You've got to have massive, massive, massive courage. Because there's a reason you're not looking at it. There's a reason you're not changing. And that's the hard part. That's the grit. That's the courage. That's the everything you've got has to go into that, not the stuff. So I concur. Yeah, I, I noticed I noticed <laughs> with uh, the past year and a half and, and just kind of the propaganda machine that has been uh, working on humans over time that I had to disconnect from all of that. I had to disconnect from social media. I couldn't be in that world because it was selling such a fear modality that it was fear-based and all on the outside of the human. And instead of being able to look inside and say, okay, what do I believe and what do I feel is real? This other force is coming in and saying, you need shots, you need medicine, you need allopathic, you have to rely on someone else as opposed to being able to sit in the seat of my soul and say, that doesn't resonate with me and that doesn't feel right. So I think part of what I've done is I've isolated myself and tried to separate myself from that. But I still feel the resonance of this overwhelming fear that the globe feels like it is being um, just inundated with. It almost feels like we're in some type of a psychic war. So... I just wanted to comment on that because I I so I you brought tears to my eyes because you what you're saying is what I need to hear. It's about being able to face myself, mm-hmm. which is the hardest thing to do when you feel weak or you feel frightened is to actually face that tiger and understand that that's maybe just a different part of you. Mm-hmm. It's not something coming from the outside. It's the greatest thing that you have to do is actually be able to look yourself square in the mirror and say, you are the architect of that tiger. Yeah. You were the one who's drawing this energy. Well, notice just so your that's... words that you used there. You didn't say that you are weak or you, you feel right. And so that's where you've got to go because that feel is a story connected to the story that they're manipulating the mind with feeling comes from the body. You've got to manipulate the story before you have access to the feeling. So then I would just say, I know I do this and I'm pretty sure he does this as well. Like, if it's not supporting the best version of me, it does not get access to me. There's no, there's not even a communication there. I have no need for the news. I have no need for keeping updated, even as a quote unquote doctor, whatever that means with like the updates on the jab that I don't have a necessity. It does not, it's not in my world. And so then there's got to be this level of, um, just grit and, and like, if it's not like, I wouldn't keep slowly drinking poison. Right. Exactly. I'm just going to say no. Um, and so that's kind of, you know, with what you're doing, it's not really an isolation because I can speak for me right here, but I feel like it's the same. You're maybe you're isolating yourself from the poisons out there, but then the world that's available 
on this other side without it, like, um, it's massively beautiful. It's massively expansive. It's massively, um, connected and, and true. And even just like the conversations that I have with TJ, like it's nothing is overwhelming. Nothing is like depressing. Everything is like, what if we could, can you imagine if we did, what if we did this and this and this, and you could do this and a human body could, I mean, this is the world we live in and you can too. But what it is, is this, it's exactly what he said earlier. It's a choice. Like you have a million different choices and there has to be this hard limit of what do you want? Support that with every decision you make. I love it. I absolutely love it. I love that the that uh, the way that <clears throat> both of you approach healing uh, or facilitating healing in others is that it leaves massive room for discomfort. <laughs> Uh, and I think that's so important. Like all good spiritual traditions or, or, or ones that I respect, you have to be able to, to face that. I mean, the only way that you can expand is to rub up against something uh, or confront something that is troubling you or that is painful or that is incredibly sad. Or So I think it's, I, I, I mean, I, why what you guys are saying rings true to me is that it leaves room for that. Like it, it encourages you to face that. And because that's really, I mean, we have to get out of our comfort zones. That's the only, only way that we can, you know, get out of our little bubbles that we create for ourselves. And it seems like mainstream medicine is all about bubbles, comfort. We want you to be comfortable. We're going to, we're going to anesthetize all of your symptoms and, and, and call you healed and send you out the door. Mm-hmm. until you come back for your next prescription. So I totally discomfort. That's that's such an important element in all of this and being able to, to dance with it. Mm-hmm. It is interesting that the world, I, the, I think one of the reasons that I disassociated from social media was that I was seeing that the world outside that I was experiencing was not the world that my phone was telling me. It, it is. So the social media is saying there's race wars and, and conflict and, you know, if it bleeds, it leads. And so it's like constant turmoil and tumult. And then I would go out into our backyard and, you know, something that I, I have received from you, Cassie, is you talking about the sun and doing sun therapy. And I've gone back to these moments where I've, I've been out in the yard with my dogs and I've been like, this is what's real. There's no guns firing in my neighborhood. There's no, there's no helicopters flying over me in in this 1984-esque reality that's Mm -hmm. observing me. This is the, the fear model that's being fed to us to make us feel weakened and that we need something outside of ourselves. So I think that's what makes your work so powerful from from the both of you is that, especially with you, TJ, is that you don't pull any punches. And I think that makes a lot of people really uncomfortable. And that's one of the things I love about you is that you're not here to soften the blows. <laughs> so, you know, you you had a post a, a few weeks ago where you were doing uh, movement with a puppy and people lost their fucking <laughs> minds. They lost their minds. And I thought, wow, you know, he's in his moment, he's perceiving what this dog is feeling, not some chick across the globe who's, you know, angry tweeting or angry telegramming him about that experience. He's actually in that moment. And it's so easy for us to observe someone else and cast our judgment on it and say, no, this is what your experience is. I can see what's really going on. So... How do you navigate dealing with that shitstorm that you get back from people, TJ? <laughs> this sounds familiar. Um, so I've 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 heard this, and I gotta say, so I'm I'm going uh, twenty plus years into this. Uh, I am a very sensitive individual, um, and I used to before I got the, the principles that I really support now. I knew were right. They just made sense when they were first presented to me. Not when I like practiced them as an infant in this group, but like when they were presented to me professionally and clinically. 
I was like, wow, this just makes total sense. But hold on, let me go personal experience and let me just see because I really don't trust it unless I can like really dive in. And so I did. And it turns out it just keeps repeating back because it is truth and it just happens. And then it just happens with everyone that applies and just takes it in. I'm like, shoot, this is a guarantee. So I was so excited <laughs> that I would like tell everybody, I'd tell all my clients, I would tell at parties back when I was binge drinking like a clown, like I would be there and I couldn't wait to tell them these principles. <laughs> But then when people met back and, and took offense or doubted it, you thought they like made a comment about my mom or something. Like I was defending like the human spirit so much that it was like, wait, what'd you just say? Like that was like I would lose my sh and then I would take it home. I'd stand my ground and defend, although just from the very short amount of experience, I knew nothing because I didn't read anything. I, I don't like reading stuff. I like experiencing but I had very short amount of this experience in clinical and just, but I knew it to be right. And then I go home and I would not eat real well and I wouldn't sleep real well. And it would take it, it would take like three, four days to process an event. And I just really wanted things to be smoothed over. Like I was friends in school with different pockets of people just because I thought a lot of people were cool. But if I upset somebody, I'd never asked for autographs when I was a little kid. Because if a player turned down and said, no, kid, not right now, I would like lose my mind. Like, oh, my God, I just upset that person by asking for his autograph. I just didn't want that to ever happen. And so then that really took place where I saw, started to see that nobody's really going to get it. And it's OK if they don't get it. It's OK. And you can have a discussion. You can show them and do things. And really, me taking it home isn't helping anybody. But it's still, I still had to, because I was just like wanting to save and save. Don't you get it? Like, why haven't you gotten this yet? Well, I took it so personally. And when they would attack the principles or attack what I was supporting, it really, really messed me up. But it wasn't helping me in any way. So now when I get to the point, somebody, I mean, <laughs> I've stated, I think Cassie like laughed because I said, I've, I've changed my terms and conditions. Like, if you're going to talk about the jab or the current fairy tale going on, I'm going to block you. I'm going to show you the door <laughs> right then. So there's just, it's right. my party. It's no tolerance. Like the, the music is going to be the music. The food's going to be the food, but this is my party here. I'm not, I'm not like guessing on hydration or guessing on this stuff. This is like what I've lived and breathed. And you're not going to convince me with some really long thing on some nourishment approach that you like. And I, I'm not going to go back and forth either because I'm not here to try to convince you. I'm just sharing different aspects of it. And if you don't like it, but you're cruel or you're sending me a DM and you're upset, you're, you're gone. You're just done. Um, and I've gotten emails. Uh, started off. The last one was classic. Um, uh, Dr. Tommy. So clearly missed my videos on that whole burning of the license thing. Uh, I'll be brief. And then went into this long thing about the dog. <laughs> but it was, it was about the dog and how I could be a real man claiming I'm a real man. And I, I'm working out with a dog and I'm using a dog as weight. And I'm doing beach exercise <laughs> muscles and I have my shirt off. because Not because my doctor is like a helio like, like lover of like the sun. Like, okay. <laughs> and I'm like feet are grounded. So I literally email back now because now it doesn't, it doesn't get me to the point to where I have a visceral, a thought that creates a feeling that now my physiology is totally changing to a stress response. Now I'm not digesting food. My blood pressure totally right. shifted. I'm not healing because of this clown. Like, so instead I flipped it. And after that whole thing, I emailed back and said, Hey, I thought you were going to be brief. And then I just, and then I just left it at that. And then she got back and emailed back and said, sad. All right. Like that. I'll take oh, that. God. You know, I have no problem. You don't have to love me, but this just like feeling the need to, to reach out. I've had friends reach out and try to tell me that, um, you know, I, I, I'd get better traction if I spoke differently. I didn't see the F word as much right. or I was jokey more. And I was, and I'm like, I'm not coming yeah. to your financial practice and telling you how to tell people to invest because you, and nor would I even think right. of that. But somehow we had an interaction and you're going to do this to me. So I spin it to where it's more comedy. And I also 
it, because it's always an opportunity to laugh. Like I just, I love being creative and I love writing. And so if I get an opportunity to come back at somebody, which is like this hilarity, um, and then maybe share it or whatever. But uh, another thing is I, I don't know where they're coming from. And that's something that I've matured right. uh, like really slowly, like, like molasses in like January, I've matured. <laughs> And, um, I, uh, it, it's literally like what it would take for somebody to reach out like that or w what it would. And I, right. I don't know, you, you know what I mean? Because I, if you get me on, on a day where I, I maybe snap a little bit, like, ah, like, what was that coming from? That was like a threshold and all this stuff happened. And then I slipped over. So I try to joke, but then also. I want to protect me as well because I am absolutely head over heels in love with myself. Like sure. to the greatest degree that I fucking love myself so much that I'm willing to literally protect this space so much that if, if you literally are sucking me and bleeding me dry of shit, you will not have access to me. Just like Cassie was saying, with all this stuff going around, you don't have access. The news doesn't have access. The government, you don't get access to this. And I'll put it up with family. You don't get access to this. So if I show you the door to my party on social media, that, that's because I adore myself. And I just, this is my thing. And I cannot, seconds are so valuable and minutes are so valuable. And so like, I don't even, uh, Cassie, I don't know about you, but I personally don't like social environments anymore. <laughs> I've tried, I love I've tried to let it go. And then every time I'm just like, that was two and a half hours. I literally could have like stared at a plant and gotten more interaction like for me or stared at the ocean or gone and just looked at like literally ladybugs on a leaf than that two and a half hours of trying to exist that I'm just... I, that's where I've elevated so much now is I've become so much more clear of what I was before that shit, right. this was such an opportunity. And that's why I keep saying with every trauma, we have a healing response that's greater. That's the design. That's what I'm fascinated about. What else could we take? Like what? Because if I lost an arm, I guarantee fucking to you, I'm going to have a badass life as a three limbed rock star. Like that's what's going to happen. And if I'm going to lose another one, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going and keep like, I'm here. This is the experience now. That's that's where it's at. And whether it's an extension of Instagram, I'm not trying to sell people on Instagram. I'm just showing you my life. Like, yeah. Maybe it inspires I love you. the story. I love the story that you told about being at the Sayer G event where people were dancing <laughs> after the event and you were sitting Indian style, kind of in your own space, like and people kept coming up to you and saying, like, why aren't you dancing? And and trying to kind of force you to interact with them in the way that they were interacting. That, Can you talk that about was the that? Thing. No, it's hilarious. I was like totally in. Now, I'm not – I have some trauma. Cassie knows this of, of a dancing experience. And um, it was an ex, like, when I was 19 and she – at a fraternity party and I was – I was getting after it. And the song was Diddy by Paperboy. So if anybody has it, it's Paperboy Diddy. And I dare you not to dance to this song. But I had my khakis and my white dress up shirt, my flower tie. It was like typical. I think I had like Dock Siders on too, right? And so I'm literally <laughs> dancing and she like puts her hand up. This is like my, something I trust and goes, just don't try so hard. And like angrily oh. told me to like not try so hard. And then I became very aware that I don't, maybe my dancing looks like Elaine from Seinfeld or like Phoebe, <laughs> like when Phoebe runs, you know? So I'm like, wait, is this not? And so then from then I was 19 and I still, I've, I've worked on it. I've moved through things. So I have a thing about dancing. Uh, I, I have gotten better. Um, but at this moment, I'd never seen what they were doing. It was like a meditation that builds to this like musical crescendo, like a half hour and then it wipes down. But everybody's just freely going. And I was just trying to take in the experience and I wasn't feeling it. I was digging the meditation and it moved and the music, the beats. God, I love music. Like I absolutely think there's just a harmonious frequency <laughs> to fucking everything. 
even just bouncing on your toes is, <laughs> is frequency, right? And so I was just like, okay. And I'm like feeling it and I'm sitting down and I'm off to the side because I'm just not, I don't want anybody to get in my space. And then a gentleman comes over. I'll save his name. He's like, what's going on, man? What's wrong? Like, why the <laughs> fuck does anything have to be wrong? And then he like, I'm like, no, I'm good, man. I'm just feeling it. And I literally was like kind of. Like when I get into meditations or get deep, it's like tunneled and everything's gray and I go yeah. and I go deep and I was like that close. And then this oh. freaking clown comes and I'm like, <laughs> you son of a bitch. Well, then he leaves. And then it's just like a whole nother slew of people. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what is going on with me just sitting here feeling my version of this experience that everybody had to come in and try to get me to go? And it. You want me to do something? Tell me I can't. Like that that's really <laughs> but, but if you try to tell me to go I have to go through that. That's why this whole thing didn't work with me. Like like everything going on. Wait, you're going to tell me how to live? Nah, that's not going to that's not going to fly. And so it was really personal like respect for me. Like I just that's something that's grown more um, and the more that I do this, then the more I, I can give, or the more you'll feel on the receiving end of me just being me, uh, because me being me is, mm -hmm. is this amazing, like dance that, that, holy shit, I can't get enough of. Like, I truly cannot believe we get to be this, <laughs> that I yeah. get to do yeah. this, that I it, I, I get teary eyed. I get goosebumps on that when I talk like that. And then maybe I'm, I, what if we all did that? And then like, maybe that's the ascension or maybe that's when the cats start telling us what to do more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, can you imagine if everybody loved themselves to the degree exactly. that he's speaking about and like loved life to that degree and then had the courage to be an individual because that's what I hear when I hear that story. Um, and it always, I think I brought this up one time too in our conversation. Um, but I read one time about a master, like he was like a spiritual master and um, the professor was like polling his class and asking like, what would the response of this master be? So the scenario was that this, um, spiritual guru. Um, I'm getting all the parts wrong, but the, the main points will get there, I promise. Um, he's invited to this extravagant like party. And it's with all the finest people in the world. And they're all dressed like in the most luxurious garments with all the jewels and everything. But he didn't get that information. So he showed up in rags. And so the question that he presented to the class was, what was the response of the master? And so they all said that he was humble and he just like complimented everyone there and all of these different responses. And at the end of the discussion, it was like, you're all wrong. He didn't even notice. And to me, like if we could be an individual and like master being an individual so much so that the performance of how it appears to everybody else, it doesn't have a sway in how we experience our reality. And it means so much to be here to feel everything that we can here that you don't even notice, right? You're doing your thing and it will disrupt everybody else because you're not doing it how they're doing it. But the richness that you're receiving from how you are engaging in your world is nourishing you to your core. And like, that's what it brings up every time I hear that. Like, what if we just let everyone be an individual? And what if you wanted to dance like a crazy person in a burrito shop? If you dance like a crazy person in a burrito shop, what if at a dance party, you wanted to sit in the middle of the floor and meditate? Do whatever is true to you, because right now we need more people. That's one thing with knowing him that I've been like just blown away by is this massive courage to be and do and experience and like risk and if we could all just be so like in love with being alive with whatever life that we've got then can you imagine how much that would dissipate like you wouldn't judge somebody else you would have nothing to compare to because the comparison would it wouldn't even be like well you're different than me so what is it like for you i have questions instead of you're not doing it like i do it because i'm doing it like they do it and, 
it would dissipate everything. If we could be individuals and be so fully in our moments, like everyone talks about be here now, practice it. It's the hardest thing on the planet to do. Why? Because you think about how others will perceive you or they'll need you to do what they're doing so bad so that they can feel good about what they're doing. Like there's so many layers to this that I actually like, we joke about it, but I think it actually is very true. Like, again, it brings it back to the individual. It should not look like two people should not dance the same. We should not speak the same. We should not use the same words. We should not use the same combination of words. We should not sing the same notes. We should like, we're here to be completely unique. We're so unique. Our fingerprints, our heartbeats will never be the same, never be duplicated again. Your heartbeat will never be heard again in existence. Why should we look the same? Why should we act the same? Like, can you imagine the world that was as diverse as we hope our microbiome is? Like, that's a world. And the first step of that is not judging yourself. Mm -hmm. That's really the first. Mm. But you have nothing to compare it to. You would just have a curiosity of like, who am I? And like, I think that's where I'm at, at least in this part of my life is like, who I, who am I without their words? Exactly. Who am I without their stories? Who am I like, what words come through me that are, are mine? And like, what, what stories are mine? And like, what's true for me that I've never heard from right. anyone else that I'm not just an echo from something else that has happened before me because I'm here on purpose and I'm here by design and I've never been here before. So to just echo what everybody else has done before me to just carve and copy somebody else's word from all of these books and gather and gather and gather so I can just regurgitate. Like what, why? Like what if we wipe out, empty out and say, hey, this, nobody's heard it before. It sounds absolutely ridiculous. This is, these are my words. This is my experience. And I hope that it's medicine for you in some way. And I have a curiosity now for what your world is like, instead of us looking to see what the world is like and then changing us to be a mere reflection of what we think is real, it, it would be such a different um, experience, I think. I used to think you teach people how to treat you by the treatment that you will accept. And then one mm-hmm. day I woke up and I was like, no, what you observe is how people have been treated by how they behave. And you can either accept that or you cannot accept it. And I think that's such a powerful thing is that we perceive that we have to just like take on everything that comes at us. And what you're both saying is that discernment is such a powerful force to be able to say, no, I don't accept that. That's not mine. And then also giving, like, we ask for freedom, but sometimes we don't offer it to those closest to us. So I think, too, the the other um, part of that, too, is, like, be whoever you are, and it's okay. Like, I do not expect you to be a certain version to be in my world, and I'm not going to be a certain version to be in your world. But I can, like, allow is not even the right word here. Because who are we to even do that? But observe. I will honor. I will honor that which is you and yours, and honor what is me and mine at this simultaneously, right? Um, so I think there's multiple pieces to that too. I'm really hoping on the hundred monkey theory. I'm really, really <laughs> relying yeah. on that. That <laughs> there will be just that one extra person that hears these words and it resonates with them and it will there will be there will be this collective conscious um awakening that people have been wanting and needing i i used to see all the time people screaming wake up wake up wake up and i don't think that's how you wake people up it's <laughs> by embodying what you're saying cassie it's by actually standing in that truth the big a letter T truth and really being able to penetrate that truth and touch it where my perception is that a lot of people claim they want that truth, but then they get fearful and then they step away from it because it challenges you. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it takes the most amount of courage to be true because Um, When you're true, it's very polarizing and we're trained to be good and to be accepted. And so it really flips everything on its head and it's probably the best work you could do. Absolutely. Well, 
I only have one more question, okay. and it's for you, TJ. What kind of root beer do you like to drink? <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> so I can I can tell yeah, you what my what favorite kind of is. Beer? What's yours? So I'm not endorsed by any company. Um, <laughs> I am. Uh, I don't. I will never be endorsed by any company. Brought to so, you by. Um. God, you know. So <laughs> literally, since working with Cassie, and since like discovering things of areas and feelings and stuff like that. I've pulled back a little. It was, <laughs> so listen to me, it was Virgil's, if anybody's aware of Virgil's. Okay. And what I would do is I'd Love get Virgil's. one bottle of Virgil's and I would like water it down and it would get me three nights. All right. So, but then since working with her, but then what's cool is like since working with her, um, I would, when I would regularly fast, um, uh, my cravings would shift and I would notice different things. And, and literally since working with her, I haven't craved root beer as often. So I go with it because I go on feel all the time. <laughs> so now I've found, I found this <laughs> herbal through her. It's called Olipops. So check <laughs> it out. It's Olipops and they're herbal <laughs> sodas, but they have like, orange cream and like red <laughs> like cherry cola and root beer no there's that little bit of a stevia kick to it that's like ah this is not root beer but it's whatever but it's okay it's okay yeah. um i don't know if you guys know this but i so i, I think I've, your I've answer is yeah, yeah, exactly <laughs> i replaced myself i have a client who made root beer for his kids when he was when they were younger and I want to find like the process because I really, I say this to her a lot, like, like all, you know, meals that I'll find in restaurants or, or things that I can make this, like I can, I can literally make this because I can like humans made this food. Okay. So I'm a human. I can make this. I think I can make a really rad root beer, but then also I bought a nugget ice maker an Opal 2.0 GE for myself again <laughs> not sponsored by opal okay nugget ice maker and i gotta say <laughs> i've gone to juices now so there's these juices that i water down over nugget ice and that's the kick i'm on right now so virgil's i guess in short but that was my that was my follow-up <laughs> question was what is nugget ice <laughs> So listen to me, there's, there's support groups. I mean, there's support groups for everything on Facebook, right? So we, we always say like, don't join the group if it's named after some label of some disease that you've been told you've had, like, just don't be in it. Like just want to stop. Well, exactly. we were trying to find on a family vacation once where these Nugget Ice uh, locations are because Nugget Ice was used in training rooms of professional teams. And to pack on shoulders and limbs. And I grew up as a kid drinking my soda with this nugget ice. And it forever like framed how my life should be lived. I should have nugget ice because I've said that these things are like pillows. They're like pillows for your teeth. And I'm a I'm an a ice chewer. And so these they're these little nuggets, but there's a Facebook group like Nugget Ice Lovers. And you could be on a road trip. You can locate any gas station that will have it anywhere in the United States for these Nugget Ice things. Well, then, real quick, Sonic. I found out Sonic had Nugget Ice for sale. Well, if you guys know what Sonic is, the girls deliver your food on roller skates. So I would pull in to a Sonic and buy a 10 pound bag of ice and the girl would like come rolling out carrying this bag of ice and I'd get it, pay $3 and I'd go take off and I'd be good to go. Well then the water's crap and I don't know what the ice is. So uh, a friend of mine suggested that I, I splurge and buy a gift for myself and so I did and it was one of the greatest um, gifts I've ever given myself, yeah. So it's a pillow <laughs> for your teeth. Um, it's these little pellet ice cubes that they're, they're like infused with air or something. I love it, those. It's, it's unbelievable. Yes. yes. Yeah. That's the best ice. I, I love it. Yeah. So they're not super hard, right? They're, they're exactly. not super hard. Oh, I love that stuff too. Yeah. For sure. Opal 2.0. They're not super hard. That's the, that's the motto, isn't it? 
Okay, Opals. I'm gonna write that down. Okay, that's it. Opal 2.0. We'll, we'll provide a link. Need. No, we won't provide a link. No, <laughs> <laughs> these people don't need our money. The only <laughs> thing. Yeah, that's yeah, just that. Thing. That's it. The nugget Not item. to where you guys are at or anything. No. Yes, exactly. Uh, that seems as good a place as any to to sort of wrap this. I feel like we've kept you a little longer than we said we were going to, but. Uh, do you would you uh, tell the listeners where they can find you guys and your work? Go ahead, Cass. Online. And you're both accepting patients now, right? Hell yeah. Yes, virtually. Yeah, absolutely. So you can find me at gritnaturalmedicine.com. That's my practice. It's a, a virtual practice. We see people um, worldwide, which is really cool. Um, and then I'm on social media at Dr. Cassie Huckabee. And um, also have a YouTube as well, um, just Dr. Cassie Huckabee. And so TJ. I am taking patients, yes. And something that I've started, I used to do in the past, and now I'm really ramping it up, our Zoom um, virtual rehab uh, performance, because I don't necessarily need to touch anybody for them to be able to put themselves in a position to heal. And so again, worldwide, like she said, uh, Australia and, and Ireland and Spain, um, but you can go to drtommyjohn.com. I need to change the doctor, um, but the website will will reflect the changes to my degrees and licensure and everything else. Um, and then Instagram, Tommy John the Third, three eyes after it. I took that back. So, yeah, look forward to hearing from everybody. Excellent. I'm going to reach out to both of you for my well, own healing journey. I, I am so touched and moved. This is the first time I've ever cried on a podcast. <laughs> I thank you both so much. <laughs> you are incredible human beings and you will both be the lights that really help us pivot and shift away from this darkness. So I just thank, thank you, you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Yes. We thank you, thank you for, so for blessing us. Yes. It's so nice Fantastic. to be here. Fantastic. And uh, Yeah. Thank you for showing up, and we we should do this again. There's so much more to explore and dig into, so Done. I really enjoyed it. Uh, thank you guys mm -hmm. so much for your time. Of course. Yeah, all right. Thank you all so much. Bye. Have a good evening. Take care, you guys. Bye. So that was a pretty powerful conversation, wasn't it? It was amazing. I have to say I have never cried on a podcast interview before and I was drawn to tears by Cassie and her power and her resonance and I just felt overwhelmed with emotion and I know it sounds very cliche to say this but I really felt seen and uh, you know it's interesting as we were talking in the very beginning the second she and TJ signed on, it felt like the energy was lifted in the room. Do you think that um, that would have happened regardless of the state of mind that you were in? Or do you think that you were kind of maybe on some level looking to this conversation to get some answer? You know what I mean? I've listened to them on several podcasts separately, and I've listened to them together on TJ's podcast, and I felt that same energy listening to them speak to each other. Hmm. And so there was just something, there's just something about them and their, their own centeredness that comes across. And it really does feel like they're resonating and vibrating at a higher frequency. And it's one of those things that when you feel it, you can tell the difference when you've been around people who, who vibrate from a low frequency. And it's, it's very attractive. Like you want to be around people that are that light and that um, electric. It just seems uh, genuine. Um, when Cassie was saying that they've lived their, you know, what they're saying, they've, they've seen the highs and the lows of that. I really get that feeling. And I think that's really, really important. And what is missing in a lot of 
mainstream medicine because it's really just reciting remedies in quotes from books, from medical books that happen to be funded by pharmaceutical corporations. Uh, and they're ascribing it to somebody who has a set of symptoms without really knowing anything about that person besides how they're manifesting physically, uh, you know, and so it's not personal at all. And I get the feeling that what they're doing is very tailored to not only the symptoms themselves, but the more importantly, the context of the symptoms and what else is going on in that particular person's life. And I think that's extremely important. It didn't read as being evangelical or um, a form of indoctrination or something that they um, have affected. It feels very natural. Like this is who these people are when they are alone with themselves and they're sitting with themselves. This is the energy that they are embodying. And I didn't feel like there was a sales pitch. There was nothing being promoted. There were there were no products that I needed to purchase in order to get where they're at. And I like that too, because much of what they're saying, all of what they're saying is that the onus is on the person, mm-hmm. that you are your own healer. Yeah. And I believe that too. I, I think that people who call themselves healers, Uh, you should run from them because they are truly trying to sell you something. This is more about recognizing that you were the person that is responsible and and in charge of your body, that you truly have body sovereignty, and that anything that your body is experiencing and dealing with is something that you have called into being. And so because of that, there are natural healing responses that are happening. And it's just being tuned into that, that and, and um, awakening to that, that is what is lacking in most allopathic medicine. It, well, yeah, and it's, it's about uh, personal responsibility, which we are not taught to have in any aspect of our culture or our society, especially medicine. Medicine is a very passive uh, form of, of, I don't know what you want to call it, certainly not healing therapy, uh, uh, bandaging your symptoms uh, without going any deeper than that. And like I was saying, when we were having the conversation, uh, it's all meant to, it's comfort, comfort based. Um, Nobody is uh, put into a a position where they really have to face their lifestyle, their mindset, their anything, anything that these symptoms are manifesting within the context of. And that's missing at least 75% of the, of the whole puzzle, you know, like I think if you don't know, where all of that is coming from. And, and you know, we, we live in pill culture, too. So if something can't be treated with a pharmaceutical, then they're kind of at a loss. Uh, if they can't treat what they have categorized you as uh, with something like a pill. And that's hit and miss, too. It's just kind of like, uh, let's try this. Um, if that doesn't work, we'll combine it with this. Uh, and they have no idea how those things are going to react or interact with one another. What the side effects are, you know, we saw that with my mom. Um, yeah, it's just ridiculous. It seems like playing a game of darts in the dark is what modern medicine seems like to me. <clears throat> and the darts have poison on the tips. Yeah, I think that's the thing that I I really enjoyed about the dialogue is that there is no panacea across the board that works for all people. You are really in charge and responsible for this gift of life that you've been given and how you interact with that life and how you respond to it is 
indicative of the the quality of life that you have. And if you go into an allopathic setting, they are, as you have pointed out brilliantly many times before, they're treating you in parts. Mm -hmm. They're not looking at the whole of the being and saying, okay, what's presenting here? What's the thing that's that's, um, happening here that we need to address? as a whole, it's like, oh, you have a hurt elbow. Well, here, let me give you this hurt elbow medicine. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so instead of examining what the, the reason behind that is in a greater context, and maybe, you know, pulling out a little bit from that and saying, maybe that's connected to something else in a a different part of your body. And this is, it's just manifesting in your elbow, but it really has nothing to do with your elbow. Mm -hmm. It's your ankle that's hurt or your knee that's, you're walking um, strangely and that's making your body adjust to that Mm -hmm. and, and misaligned. So I think that's the thing that, Uh, I really get from both TJ and from Dr. Huckabee is that they're seeing people as a whole being and not just parts. And that is something, I mean, that I've always liked and respected about traditional Chinese medicine too, is that it's extremely tailored to the individual. And I've always had great results with it. Um, It's just not accessible all the time to everyone. Uh, But the kinds of things that uh, Tommy John and Cassie are talking about, um, the process can be initiated by anybody anywhere. Um, The basic philosophy that they're talking about isn't something that you go in, you have to go into an appointment and get prescribed to you. Um, but if you apply what they're talking about to your life and really examine it and really, you know, listen to the feedback that your body is giving you and your mind, um, you know, at least you'll, it'll set you heading in the right direction. And it's all about it during that process too. I think you learn a lot about yourself and which again, that knowledge is something that you will always have with you and will hopefully make you less apt to repeat the same things over again and get into the same situation. Yeah. It's like you learn the lesson that you learned from that dis-ease in the body. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I feel like there's this necessity for instruction and for for the, a hierarchy in medicine and people are very attracted to going to a doctor and being diagnosed and really locking into that diagnosis and what they are doing in the, in the methods that they're using is not assigning a label to what's going on with you mm-hmm. and there's a lot of power in that because People get very wrapped up in their diagnosis and they get very wrapped up in the victimhood of having certain diseases in the body. And there's a lot of um, Munchausen's syndrome in that where you get sympathy and people feel sorry for you and they'll feed into the ego of the sickness And this is not about that. That doesn't mean that the challenges that you face in the body um, aren't going to be acknowledged, but it's really up to you to look at that. It's not up to the world to validate your sickness. And I, again, to reiterate, um, I I mentioned it during the conversation and I was kind of hoping that they would pick it up after that and, and comment on it, but it didn't, nobody really did. And that's fine. Um, But about discomfort uh, and how this process and any real, to me, any real meaningful process, whether that be physical, spiritual, psychological, whatever, energetic, um, you're going to meet something that's going to make you uncomfortable or you're going to meet something that, you know, you you might get an answer that you don't want. And I think it's important to pay attention to that and to be able to work with that 
discomfort of that knowledge and overcome it. Because obviously, whatever bubble that we are existing in that has uh, maybe amounted to that, whatever, however your dis-ease is manifesting, isn't working, or something is blocked, or something needs to be pushed in a different direction. Um, so I think that it can't but help to get out of that bubble or out of the range of comfort and out into unfamiliar territory where there may be something there that you have missed or something that you've been avoiding on purpose or something that needs to be addressed that would help to, you know, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, heal your whatever situation you have going on. I think of the question to ask, like, you know, step one is what's the payoff here in this illness that I'm experiencing? What am I getting out of it? Why am I in this state? Because I think that's a lo- that's a really important aspect to why people get sick is there is a payoff for them for some reason. They mm-hmm. need to power down. They need not to have responsibilities or whatever it is that that dis-ease creates or manifests in your life. I think that's one of the reasons that we call these things into being is because we are getting some something out of it. So I think that's part of the process is trying to understand um, how is this serving me? Yeah, definitely. And to shift gears, you, you called it to my attention a while back how much uh, TJ and Cassie resemble each other. And seeing them side by side on the screen, I, I couldn't help but think that they look like long lost siblings. They look. Or soulmates or <laughs> twin souls or somehow they're their energy on this level of existence resonates with each other to such a degree that they look, it's like they're mirror images of each other. Like Mm -hmm. she's the female embodiment of his energy and he's the male embodiment of her energy. It's just, it was beautiful. It was beautiful to see that they're two really gorgeous human beings and it has very little to do with their physicality it's the soul that's inside that's inhabiting that that uh this skin suit that we're wearing <laughs> like they're just they're good people mm-hmm. and tj being more playful and monkey like and cassie being more intense and lioness like like it's really great to see both of that. Yeah, I really I really enjoy them as people and I feel like they're the type of people that you want to be around. Like I just wanted we could have spoken for hours. There was just so much to uncover and unpack and they have so much to give, you know, in just in their being. And I think that, again, that has to do with resonating at a higher level is that there's a surplus of energy to, to share with people. And they, they definitely embody that. For sure. Well, uh, I would like to thank all of you for listening and making it this far. And I hope that you enjoyed the episode as much as we did and got something from it, which I can't help but think that you did, because who couldn't? I mean, any almost anybody could listen to that and mine some sort of gem or gold from it. Uh, so yeah, we were really thankful to have them on at the same time, and I'm sure that it, it will happen again. Most definitely. And make sure if you folks have the opportunity to check out their individual websites. Uh, They've got some really fantastic information out there. And we look forward to sharing time with you again. All right. Until next time. (laughs) Ta-ta. That's exactly what I was going to (laughs) say.
If you've liked what you've heard and would like to contribute to The Melt, there are a few ways that you can do that. The most tangible would be financially. Just click the Patreon link in the episode notes and there you will find ways that you can contribute for as little as $3 a month. This will give you access to bonus episodes, early access to regular episodes, and you can also participate in monthly Zoom meetups. Contributing financially will also help make the melt better, pay the bills, and help to make this podcast a full-time endeavor that I can fully devote my time to and provide you with more content. Another way of contributing would be to go to wherever it is that you subscribe to The Melt and give it a favorable review or rating, and this will help it to reach more people. You can also spread the word to friends and family via social media, email, or word of mouth. And lastly, if none of those options are readily available or appealing to you, simply send your positive thoughts and intentions. In an interconnected and quantumly entangled multiverse, these also go a long way. Thank you.